Hi guys, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Acidic Environment video series. In this one we're just going to have a quick look at the comparison in the properties of alcohols, acids and esters. In the last two videos we've looked at each of these three uh, homologous series and the important functional groups that are involved when we mix two of these to form the third. One of the important ones is this hydroxy group. Now the hydroxy group is actually present in both the alcohols and the alkanoic acids, but not in the ester. Why is it so important for alcohols? Well, firstly, it's uh, the actual functional group. It's the distinctive component of the alkanols that gives them their um, unique feature. It's also a structure that creates polarity. Because the bond is a polar bond, which creates a type of dipole-dipole interaction between adjacent molecules uh, of the type that gives us the strong hydrogen bonds between these molecules. We know that hydrogen bonds uh, have a um, tendency to increase melting points and boiling points of particular molecules. We know that particularly for something like water, but ethanol itself also because of the OH groups, um, the OH group uh, interacting with one another also has a higher comparative um, melting and boiling point. And these are one of the important properties that you may be asked about in terms of comparisons between alcohols, uh, acids, and esters. The other thing that's very important is that the boiling point fairly obviously increases with chain length. And that's simply a matter of mass. The more mass, the more atoms are on the chain, the more energy is required to get them moving with sufficient energy to actually break those bonds, even dispersion forces between the different components of uh, each of the two chains. Now, carboxylic acids also have the OH group present. Um, which creates that polarity and that hydrogen bonding between the adjacent molecules in the same way that it did for um, the acids. But when we compare them, we find that they also that presence of the double bonded oxygen, which also is a polar bond, um, increases the molecular weight of the corresponding um, acid as well. So where we have something which is, say, um, if it's something as simple as methanol, CH3OH, compared to methanoic acid, which is HCOOH, then what we're looking at is uh, 16 and 16 is 32 and 12 is 44. So 46 grams would be the molecular weight, roughly, of the ethanol, uh, sorry, of the methanoic acid. But for the methanol, it's going to be 16 and 12 is 28 and 4 is 32 grams. So you can see the difference between these two groups um, based on the number of carbons in them means that the acid is going to have a much greater molecular weight than its corresponding alcohol. This is actually going to affect its uh, melting and boiling point because the acids are going to have a higher melting and boiling point because of that additional molecular weight. So we can see that there's a couple of important factors that are going to affect um, melting and boiling points um, in, and, and also other things like solubility um, based on the polarity of the molecules, but also based on their molecular weights. The important thing with the alkanoic acids is that the polarity is um, created by both the OH bond or the carbon to OH bond, COH, but also the carbon oxygen bond. Both of these are important, um, creating either hydrogen bonds or dipole dipole interactions in order to link those uh, molecules together. Dispersion forces also exist if we, if we consider something um, like uh, ethanoic or acetic acid. And then we have the situation like we've had talked about previously with ethanol, where you have a region where there is polarity and therefore interactions involving dipole dipole. Uh, or hydrogen bonds, and also a region where uh, there is nonpolar uh, dispersion force interactions. And of course, the longer this component of the chain, the more dispersion forces there will be per molecule. So something like uh, butyric acid or butanoic acid is going to have 
uh, four carbons, and therefore this part of the molecule back here is going to be much larger, and therefore an increased number of dispersion forces um, for that molecule. Um, esters, on the other hand, uh, are polar substances because of that carbon, oxygen, carbon, double bond, oxygen uh, situation that's occurring. Um, but they have a lower melting and boiling point because of the lack of that OH group. It's not there. There's no hydrogen bonding because of the lack of hydroxy groups. And hydrogen bonding is what gives us that highest uh, requirement, energy requirement, in order to separate the molecules from one another. So the lack of hydrogen bonding in esters due to the lack of hydroxy groups means that the when we compare each of these, the esters are actually the lowest of the melting and boiling points. And I've got one table to try and help, help you compare each of these. Now notice that this time we're not looking at the number. So propanol has three carbons, acetic acid will have two carbons, and methyl methanoate will have one for the methyl and one for the methanoate, so two carbons here. So we're not looking at the number of carbons being consistent here, but look at the molecular masses. So molecular mass is identical for the pro uh, for propanol, acetic acid, and also for methyl methanoate. So in this case, we can take the mass out of the equation and say, okay, if the mass is not an issue, we know that if it's a greater mass, it'll have a higher um, boiling point. But if the masses are consistent and they're all equal, then what else is going on? Well, what we see is that the acid here is very, very high. Um, next on the list is the alcohol. And at the bottom of the list is the ester. So the ester having that lower um, boiling point because of the lack of hydrogen bonds and acetic acid having that higher one because it has both hydrogen bonds involved with the OH groups and also the dipole-dipole interactions of those uh, oxygen groups. Thanks for watching.